Thank you. 
Hello and welcome to Unlocking Christmas on Christmas Eve. What would you normally be doing on Christmas Eve? Yes, I'm sure you're doing many of the things that you would normally do, maybe prepping dinner for tomorrow, maybe wrapping presents, maybe just making last minute preparations, cleaning the house, I don't know, finishing up work before some time off. Maybe you'd also be going to church, maybe a, a, an early evening service, an all age one, or maybe a watch night service much closer to midnight. And maybe amongst all the other things that you've been impacted by this year in a negative way, all the things that have changed and been disrupted, you're thinking, well, even Christmas has been disrupted. It has been disrupted, I can't argue with that, but it hasn't been changed. And we can still, still come together to celebrate it as one. We are not on lines, we are online. We are here together, not in the same room, but in the same space and in the same spirit and for the same reason, to unlock Christmas with hope. So I hope that you're able to enjoy the carols and readings and reflections on hope tonight. And all you need then to get started is a cup of something you like and a mince pie. That's all. Otherwise, sit back, relax and enjoy as we unlock Christmas with hope.
A reading from Isaiah. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie above thy deep and dreamless sleep. The silent stars go by, yet in the dark street shineth the everlasting light. And fears of all the years are met in me tonight. O oh, morning stars, together proclaim the holy birth, and praises sing to God the King. Peace to man on earth, for Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above. While mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of wandering love. How silently. How silently the wondrous gift is given So God imparts to human hearts The blessings of his heaven No ear may hear his coming But in this world of sin where meek souls will receive him, still the dear Christ enters in. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in. Us today we hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel.
The Birth of Jesus In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Saviour, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem the city of David. And you will recognise him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased.
Matthew 4, 16 and 17. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, turn from your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. So, Christmas Eve is here at last. I'm very excited, are you? I hope you are and you're all organised with everything wrapped and underneath the Christmas tree. The Christmas story is one that is a very familiar story to us all, isn't it? Perhaps you've even starred in a nativity play yourself. I have several times over the years, although I was never gentle enough to be chosen to play Mary. I wonder why. The Christmas story is indeed a very familiar one. And as I was thinking about that word familiar, I thought about how it means that we can just switch off to things and almost go on autopilot because something is known to us so well. We can stop paying attention, stop listening, and I wonder if for some of us, it's that's the case with the Christmas story. We've heard it all before. Yeah, a baby's been born. Yeah, that's nice. Now where's my mince pie? Carols too, although we only sing them at Christmas time. We, over the years, we get familiar with them. And now perhaps we sing them without even realizing what we are actually singing. We all know that 2020 has been a year like no other. Things that were once very familiar to us, like nipping to the shop for bread and milk, meeting friends for a cuppa, even going to work, are no longer familiar. We have to stop and pay attention and think before we do anything. Will there be a one-way system? Where's my mask? How many people are allowed here at one time? With so many changing rules and so many diff in so many differing areas, it's very easy to get confused. Once familiar, now unfamiliar. We are unsure and need to stop and think before we go anywhere. I wonder if this Christmas we could all stop and think, hear afresh about why we take time out to celebrate Christmas every year. What is it really all about? You see, Jesus being born is a big part and a big significant part of the story, but it's not the end of the story. As the angels told the shepherd, a saviour has been born. And it's that same Jesus that we remember at Easter. You see, sin, wrongs that we have all done, separate us from God. But Jesus stood in that gap for you and for me and took our punishment on himself. He suffered, he died, and he rose again on the third day. And today he's in heaven preparing a place for those who follow him. Jesus is love, light, life. In him we can know true peace and have real 
home. I'd like to close by reading an extract from the Nativity poem, written in 1981 by Susan Anderson. And I'd encourage us all to listen afresh to that familiar story that we remember and celebrate at Christmas time. The Nativity Poem. We have heard the story, it's been told and then retold about the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem's stall. Yet every Christmas, the tale bearers tell once again and reflect on that sweet babe born to redeem all. A decree went out from Caesar and so it came to pass that Joseph and sweet Mary travelled to be taxed. In desperate need of shelter they pushed on to Bethlehem only to find the inns were full, no room was offered them. Still, Joseph knocked on every door till one innkeeper said, seek refuge in my stable, here's some straw to make a bed. And Mary gratefully sank down into that hay and gave birth to the Saviour that first sacred Christmas day. The shepherds and the wise men came, led by that glorious star, and angels sang out praises as they journeyed from afar. They somehow knew this child was sent to bring the world his light and their hearts were filled with wonder as they looked on him that night. So, our Lord and Saviour born in humble majesty to save us from our earthly sins and seal our destiny. On this and every Christmas day, we thank the Lord above for sending our Redeemer to bless us with his love. May you know the love, light, life, peace and hope of Jesus. And like that innkeeper, make some room for him this Christmas. John chapter 1, verses 2 to 5. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The light of Jesus shines in our darkness.
Amazing. Well, hasn't that been great? What a special time together in the run up to Christmas, uniting together um, all the wonderful churches in this area coming together as we reflect and wait upon Christmas. So we just want to close by praying um, and sending out a blessing to each and every one of you. So let's just pray together. Jesus, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for each and every person that is tuned in, for each and every home that is watching, for each and every heart. Lord, we ask that you would come and dwell, that your spirit would become and would be known in each and every one of our homes this Christmas. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the gift that he was, that you sent your only son to us. God, help us to know what that means afresh this Christmas. And Lord, we just pray for a special blessing of peace, of joy, of love to be found this Christmas. I just want to uh, pray or declare uh, these words over every household tuning in and our city really as a whole. Uh, millions and millions of people will be hearing the gospel during this season, mm. like this good news that brings hope. And although it looks different in 2020, I want to declare, let preachers preach it, let choirs sing it, let kids unwrap it, let's, let homes host it, let rulers fear it, let mothers hold it, let cynics see it, let artists tell it, let angels yell it, let people with heads bowed low perceive it, those with debts unpaid receive it, and those with doubts unprayed believe it once again. Yeah, and in Numbers 6 it says, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace mm -hmm. this Christmas. Merry Bye Christmas, then. everyone. Merry Christmas. <laughs>
Thank you.